The Live Golf Tour, still in its infancy, has been castigated by proponents of the PGA Tour. One of the defectors, currently playing for the Saudi-backed league, has recently broken his silence on what prompted him to defect, his thoughts on golf in general, and why he turned his back on the PGA Tour. Today, we are discussing Andy Ogletree and his revelations that he was at rock bottom before his Live Golf switch. Stay with us. Let's dive straight in. What did Ogletree have to say? Before finding solace with the Live Golf Tour, Andy Ogletree has explained how he was at rock bottom with his golf career. The 2019 Amateur U.S. Open champ defected earlier this year after revealing he'd had just about enough with life on the PGA Tour. Appearing on the Fire Drill podcast next to Ryan French and Alan Shipnuck recently, Ogletree revealed that he decided to defect to the Live Golf Tournament despite a ton of criticism after becoming disillusioned with the game and becoming super frustrated with golf. He explained how he was having a difficult time advancing in qualifiers while also succumbing to injury after injury. He also admitted to turn up at tournaments across the country just to make ends meet, but did concede that it was his own fault for not putting in the performances. However, Ogletree also said that life as a pro isn't how he envisioned it when he was a confident amateur. After claiming he had gotten to the point where he was broke, he said, My parents were fortunate enough to provide me with the opportunity to go to college, get an education, play junior golf, and do all these great things. I'm super thankful for everything they've given me. But he went on to explain that was as far as they were capable of taking him. Ogletree also explained that his parents wouldn't and couldn't fund his entire career and even suggested that was the correct course of action. What else did he have to say then? Stay tuned to find out. Ogletree went into detail of how expensive the sport is just to play before claiming that a lot of youngsters coming up benefit from mom and dad's bottomless pit of money before saying, I grew up in a small town in Mississippi. We didn't have that kind of money. He then went on to reveal how shortly after turning pro, he quickly fell out of love with the sport at one point telling his agent that he wasn't having fun playing golf anymore. He went on to say that this is not what I want to be doing. If this is how golf is going to be, then I'm going to have to take a step back and reevaluate everything. Ogletree went on to suggest that if you can block everything out and are mentally capable, you can easily prosper in the sport, using Cameron Young as an example. He then discussed the somewhat controversial finance aspect of live golf. Of course, many aren't happy with the source of the cash, Saudi Arabia, and the country's horrific human rights record. However, Ogletree was easily able to separate when it came to the money side of things, saying there was definitely not an issue with where the money was coming from. Of course there wasn't. He then said that the source of the tour's cash was the only defense the tour had, even though it's a pretty solid argument. What do you guys make of what Ogletree said? Next up, one golfer who has recently been cut from Live Golf has pledged to support the DP World Tour. Stay tuned. Live Golf has, so far, cut 19 players from their field, including one Andy Ogletree, but one of those players has recently spoken out. Pablo Larrazabal has recently been been cut from the breakaway tour just three months after defecting to join up. Having taken part in the inaugural event in St. Albans back in June, Lorazabal has now been cut due to bigger names being added from the PGA Tour, including the likes of British Open champion Cameron Smith. Lorazabal earned himself approximately $344,000 following his 13th place finish at the Centurion Club, but it is now deemed surplus to requirements as players like Bryson DeChambeau have also recently joined. Having been sanctioned by the PGA Tour, Tour, the Spaniard returned to the DP World Tour, formerly the European Tour, in a bid to reintegrate himself with his former friends. Taking to Instagram, he revealed how he could not wait to play in the event in Denmark, also posting, It's been six weeks since my last tournament, but the game is feeling good. For those that are speaking without knowing, I am a DP World Tour member, and my dream has always been to succeed here in Europe. See you all at some point at my office, the DP World Tour. It seems as though he's come crawling back. Do you guys think the DP World Tour should welcome him back? Sergio Garcia has been speaking out this week too. Stay with us. Having quickly become one of the game's most reviled figures due to sheer greed, Sergio Garcia has this week given his opinion on next week's Live Golf Tournament in England and any potential haters who might be around to tell him what they think of him. The Spaniard, once one of the game's most beloved players, believes there may be a frosty reception awaiting him and other Live Golfer stars when they head to Wentworth for the BMW PGA Championship. However, he was in a confident mood when discussing any potential detractors saying, I'm sure some guys will be tense about it because we're going to go out there and play. What I'm going to do is support the European tour and that's all I can do. Whoever doesn't like it, too bad for them, which will do nothing to ease tension between both tours. Garcia, who has only won a solitary major in his more than 20 year career, was seen as one of the main proponents of the Live Golf Tour when it first came around and as such has been the object of many fans' frustrations with many suggesting he's sick of not earning the top prize 
prizes due to his lack of competitiveness in the major events. What do you guys make of Garcia's inflammatory remarks? Give us your thoughts below. Next up, Phil Mickelson has continued to be a leader in the live golf field. Another golf star who caught a ton of flack for defecting to live golf was Phil Mickelson. As the Saudi-backed league continues to shake up the sport, Mickelson has become the first to implement one of their new rules. The Saudi-backed tour has recently announced its competitors can wear shorts during their respective rounds, which is a first in professional golf and over the past weekend in Boston, Mickelson has become the first to take them up on their relaxed version of the rules. The Saudi-backed league continues to irk golf purists, but critics of the PGA Tour say it's about time a rival came along to drag an archaic sport into the 21st century. There are plenty of bizarre rules in the game which belong in the past. I mean, who really cares if a golfer is wearing shorts or long pants? It's their skills with the club in hand that people are paying money for. Mickelson was the first to let the cool air waft across his legs as he shot a 68 on the second day of the tournament, with British Open winner Cameron Smith some way off the pace, five strokes behind leader Taylor Gooch. Greg Norman announced the rule change earlier this week, and Mickelson wasn't shy in getting the old pins out. What do you make of this one? Finally, it's been a great start for Lefty. Stay tuned. In what many will perceive to be a touch of karma, it's safe to say Phil Mickelson hasn't enjoyed the best start to life with Live Golf. Since defecting from the PGA Tour, Mickelson hasn't been in great form and lambasted his fortunes late last week. Before his recent round in Boston, where he shot a one under par 69, Mickelson failed to break 70 in his previous 13 tries, which had begun to worry Big Phil. He said, I'm certainly frustrated because I'm playing well at home and I'm not bringing it out here. I feel I'm closer than it looks even though the scores have been atrocious. Mickelson, who became the oldest man to win a major by winning the PGA Championship last year at the age of 50, went on to describe how he'd been forcing things a little too much of late before also saying he'd been making a few too many little mistakes. However, he did promise that better scores were coming and referenced other more prominent slumps he overcame earlier in his career as evidence. Whatever happens, PGA Tour fans won't be particularly upset at his not-so-hot start to life with Live Golf. What do you guys make of Mickelson's current form? As always, thanks for dropping in on us today, and remember to tune in again next time when we'll be discussing all sorts of other cool bits. And why not do us a big favor by liking today's video and share it with any golf enthusiasts you might have lurking on your socials. Bye, guys.